The ultrasonic sensor is one of the strangest sensors that LEGO has created. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can optimally use it to achieve maximum performance. So to begin, I'm just going to explain how this works. This sensor sends out ultrasonic waves from both of its outlets here, and that goes and hits an object and bounces back. The time it takes for those ultrasonic waves to travel to the object and back is measured. And that is how this sensor is able to calculate its distance from the object. If you want to see more short tutorials about various LEGO components, make sure you subscribe to the channel and like this video. So to start off with some basics. The ultrasonic sensor has two places where ultrasonic waves are released, and those ultrasonic waves are aimed toward an object, and the time it takes for those ultrasonic waves to bounce back is used to compute the distance that the ultrasonic sensor is away from that object. And this is similar to a bat's echolocation, which you may have heard of in the past. In echolocation, bats use sound in order to figure out where objects are. And similarly, the ultrasonic sensor uses sound to figure out where objects are for the robot. This means that the amount of light or really any other external factor that you could possibly find in the competition rarely will ever affect the ultrasonic sensor, making it a very safe option if you're trying to use it for map navigation. Despite this, like all the other sensors, the ultrasonic sensor is one of the largest sensors that LEGO has ever made, and in my opinion, it's unnecessarily large. And this makes it really difficult to incorporate into your robot design, because in addition to other types of sensors, as well as your motors and your attachments, you somehow need to get this big sensor attached into your robot. And my best advice for this is that the ultrasonic sensor should always be able to see fully in front of it without any obstructions, no matter what orientation or configuration the robot is in, or whether it has any objects that it's carrying. And if you think about this too late, your ultrasonic sensor may end up in a weird place, like on the side of your robot or somewhere on the top. But in most cases, that doesn't work because the ultrasonic sensor usually needs to be located very low to the ground, so it's able to see most of the objects that are on the mat. If the ultrasonic sensor is located too high up, then you're only going to see certain objects. And it's better that you see everything by keeping the ultrasonic sensor lower. And so if you have to put this ultrasonic sensor on the side or on top of your robot, I would recommend that you put it on the side because you'll be able to get this ultrasonic sensor lower and get a better range of vision for the ultrasonic sensor. Ideally, your ultrasonic sensor would be located somewhere in the middle of your robot where your attachment would not be able to obstruct it, but in a lot of robots, that's very difficult to achieve. And so I've seen some teams put their ultrasonic sensor on the back of the robot, where they usually only have a caster wheel, and there's a lot of empty space, so the ultrasonic sensor is able to work untouched, but the issue with this, and this brings me to my second point, it's much easier to look for objects that are approaching you rather than traveling away from you because your robot is going to be moving forward and approaching the things that it wants to do next. And so if you're monitoring for things that are moving away, then you're going to have to be trusting your robot that your robot hasn't disturbed the mat throughout the execution of its program. And many times your robot will move things slightly. And so basing your ultrasonic sensor measurements off of something that's potentially moving that you've already touched is a bad idea. You should be focusing on getting your ultrasonic sensors to be looking at areas of the mat that are untouched and thus remain in a constant position, which will give you a, an appropriate standard to control decisions off of. And to elaborate on that, that means that your ultrasonic sensor should be looking for things that are permanent. That can be things like walls or permanent. Keeping your ultrasonic sensor too high could lead to you having issues during a competition if the wall is too small. But if your ultrasonic sensor is located low, then you're never going to have this issue because there's always a minimum height for walls in most robotic competitions. I want to talk about the types of modes that can be used with the sensor. With the spike kit and I believe the Mindstorms kit, LEGO has introduced a new feature where you can measure distance as a percentage. And I would strongly recommend that you do not do this because the percentage is going to always vary depending on where you are and the specific conditions of that area. I would recommend that you either use centimeters or inches because the ultrasonic sensor is much more accurate at doing that than determining its own maximum distance. Other than that, you can perform the same types of control flow like stopping the robot once the ultrasonic sensor meets a certain condition or using it in an if else statement. If you have any questions about the ultrasonic sensor, leave your questions down in the comments below. And remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel.